All right, Fedora. Big brawl happening in Washington, D.C. Thanks to Tim Burchett. Yeah, Darn this is good. really this is really amazing. And it's, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, I, I, it, to me, it's, it's an interesting lesson because, you know, I think a lot of us felt that this was something important. I think some of us may have felt it was more or less important than, than others did, but I think th what we're seeing it going on here and what we've been seeing going on for the last couple of days, I think is really starting to illustrate that this is that they're, they seem to be taking this more seriously than we are. Um, you know, I mean, this is a, this is a hell of an article and this is written by the Hill, right? This is not like, you know, like, you know, some, you know, some, some rag on, on the side of the, of the aisle to, at the Safeway. Right. So, you know, and, and this is, this is a well-written article. Yeah. They're, they're quoting Elizondo and they're quoting, um, Mellon, right. But they're also quoting a bunch of other people. It's well-researched. It's, it's hard hitting. It's, it's, it's to the point. And, um, and to me, it's, it's just, it's, like I said, it's, the fact that the the fact that people seem to be have this impulse to fight against it as hard as they seem to be doing indicates to me that it's it's a much more serious problem than I gave it credit for. Well, I mean, John, I mean, it, it's what we've been talking about for the last couple of days here, and we even got into it with the roundtable last Friday night, which was. Literally, this is about the military industrial complex starting to flex its muscle and the elected leaders of the country saying, you can't have that power. And the military coming back saying, yes, we can. And yes, we do. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I just I, I, I guess I just would have hoped that would have been. Uh, done in a more private setting, I guess. You know, to me, it was just, um, I don't know. Like I said, I was just, I was a little taken back by by how the whole thing played out. Um, you know, because I, I think that, um, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I really didn't, you know, I, I really thought that there was a good chance that, that the, that the Pentagon didn't, you know, didn't, um, you know, didn't really take it, take what they had presented as, as super seriously. And they were just saying, you know, Hey, this is a, this is a framework. This is an idea of where we want to start sort of a thing. And instead everyone seemed to be drawing lines in the sand and, and calling each other out. And I mean, it is, it's getting, it's getting vicious. I mean, in this article, they include a video of this guy, you know, talking on the floor and I mean, he's, he's pissed off. He's, he's, he's mad. And, and, you know, I mean, it's um, people are getting up in arms about this. And, um, to me, it just it it says, like I said, it says to me that I just I, I I wasn't taking. I mean, yeah, I I knew what the what the Pentagon was doing was essentially the same kind of carbon copy thing they usually do, but I didn't take it to be as big of a risk to everything else as I think a lot of these people clearly are. Well, I mean, I think this guy is seeing, you know, this Tim Burchett. Okay, I really believe he is seeing the light of day. Yes. All right, that the military industrial complex doesn't want to play ball with the elected officials by the people and for the people or for the people by the people, whatever your statement is down there. All right. And and I think that a lot of these elected officials are blinded by the idea that what they say goes, that that the law truly matters. And basically, and this is my interpretation of it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, my interpretation of everything is that the military said with the AOI MSG basically said, you don't need to know anything. The public doesn't need to know anything. We've got this covered. We'll handle our own airspace. We'll handle our own investigations and in the meantime senator gillibrand senator burchett and many others marco rubio mark warner and the list is growing for once the list is growing they want to know what's going on because this to me is showing that they really have been kept in the dark the last 70 plus years since roswell and they are basically standing up saying we were elected to be the voice of the people we want to know what's going on. The public, the, especially the American public, has a right. And they just got bitch slapped by their own 
military. And and no and, and the thing is is that, is that you know what what you're really kind of clearly pointing out is that, is that this is um this has become quite a um quite an inflection point in a way um in, in that you know essentially this is this is a, a prime example of the hypocrisy that we've been dealing with this entire time. I mean it's it's um um yeah i mean it's it, it's kind of it's kind of mind boggling it really is i mean it's 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 kind of it's kind of mind boggling but you know the thing is is that i think for me anyway you know i think i you know i, I don't know i just, i just got the impression that cuz i mean i've seen the military do this before where they've 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 tried to preempt um congress and 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 do their own program and you know very often in my in my my historical experience it, it's it, it's never been quite the threat to the main program that this that people seem to be treating this as. And so, you know, I, I guess that's what's kind of surprising me because I mean, the DOD can do whatever they want. If Congress goes and mandates a bunch of stuff, that stuff legally trumps what, uh, we gotta stop using that term, um, uh, that legally, you know, um, trumps is on top of, of whatever the DOD decides, right? Because it, it is basically ruled that way. So, and yeah, I mean, this is quite a quite an inflection and quite a, a um, everyone kind of calling, calling their cards uh, on the on the card table it, it's going to be amazing dude i think this is the beginning of something that could it could get ugly yeah and i'm not yeah. i'm not trying to paint uh, a very perverse picture of this but i believe it could get very ugly i think that if the politicians keep going at this we could see i don't even want to know what we could see well, I do because I'm curious. But no, but to your point, let's face it. If 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 you really take in all of what we're talking about in all of its context, you bring in all the mill lab stuff, you bring in you know everything out. Like th this is this is not this is not a light topic. And um, you know, once people kind of wake up to what's going on, um, you know, it's 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 you know, it, it really, it, the whole red pill thing is a good analogy, right? Because once you see it, and, and I think you're right, I think um, I think that that gentleman, I, I think a lot of others are slowly seeing it. And I think that as this, as this backlash grows, I think that, you know, you are going to see a, a showdown of short of sorts. But let's face it, if, if it's a series of a cover up as some people think it is, if it's been going on for as long as it has been, if it if it, if it covers as much U.S. capital and as much U.S. investment dollars as some people seem to think it is, it probably should blow up in a certain way. Right. And this is this, this will be a big deal. Well, let's move on to number two, as we have Robert Bigelow, the. Las Vegas billionaire announcing winners of his, his near death contest. Yeah. So, so this, I mean, first off, what I want to, I want to applaud Mr. Bigelow for once, you know, for an, announcing a contest, uh, coming up with the rules, uh, publicizing everything, um, putting everything in the clear and announcing winners in a rather short order. Right. I mean, this actually the whole thing kind of came and went pretty quick, which I think is kind of cool. Um, uh, now, um, you know, this, this, you know, is, you know, you, you may feel different ways about this or uh, this or that, because, you know, I, I think I, to a level, to a certain degree, I would have preferred if, if some completely random people had won, but as many of you, um, may know him, uh, Jeffrey Mishlov, um, who is a, um, a, a psychiatrist and, um, someone who's been involved in this community for a number of years with his, um, with his shows that he's, he's put on. And um, he actually ended up winning the top prize, um, which was five hundred thousand dollars U.S. That's you know that's not chump change. You know that's um, that's uh, that's a, a significant amount of money. Um, and I mean, and second prize was three hundred thousand. Third prize is one hundred fifty thousand. So I mean, this is a, you know this is some pretty serious money. And there's a bunch of people that won fifty grand. And so, um, and uh, most, if not all of these essays will be published. Um, so you can read them yourself, but, um, to me, it's just, um, you know, this is just, this is Bigelow trying another vehicle to spur development and innovation in a area that he feels is lacking those things. Right. And he's tried other things before. He tried NIDs. He tried this. He's tried. He's basically he's trying to figure out how do you how do you catalyze this? How do you how do you you know how do you find that ember and blow on it and get that flame to start? And um, and I think this is just another attempt of his 
to um, to do that. And I guarantee you that from the list of winners, some number of them will be selected and then brought in uh, as, as part of some program that he'll do um, that, that has to do with afterlife studies. So that would be my that would be my guess is what will happen. Well, you know, what was the purpose of this contest that Bigelow put up a million dollars of his own money? Uh, I think, um, it ended up getting pushed out to 1.5. Um, and, um, I, you know, I really, I really think it comes down to what I just said. I, I think that, I think that Bigelow is very frustrated. Um, as many of us are, you know, once you realize the amount of data that exists, um, and the fact that still people don't believe it's very, very frustrating. And so I think, you know, he's trying different vehicles to figure out how do I, how do I shake people and get people to actually act right? And he tried the NIDS program. He tried other things. And I think this is just another vehicle that he's trying to say, look, if I can get this contest going, if I can get all these people de debating this and discussing this, is this going to spur a lot of public debate about uh, the afterlife and what it means and what, what's really going on? And let's face it, a, a lot of us have fallen into that into the study of that field over the years because of, of how our other things drag us. And so it is something we're learning a lot about right now. And it is something we're learning new things about right now. And it is something that we're making new breakthroughs in about right now. And so it is something that's interesting to talk about right now. Um, but it's, it's uh, you know, what his end game is, I don't really know. All right. Finally tonight, Daniel Lotus, Vice Magazine freelance writer, contributor to the magazine. Kind of rips into canadian ufos what do you yeah got? yeah well you know it, it, it was an interesting article and um you know i i i um you know i i i really what i really wanted was i really wanted to see what you thought of it um you know because the thing is is that this was a um you know it's it, it, I'll, I'll cover it in a link in my notes and and i encourage everyone to read it it's 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 nicely written it's it's um um, it's certainly, um, it's certainly very thorough. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's kind of damning. It, it certainly doesn't, doesn't look good on, on Canadian military. No, it doesn't, you know, and basically what, what's happened here is, we got a real first report of CF-18s being scrambled into the airspace. We have not heard of this before. The government has denied it, even though we know that it is happening. And Daniel goes into a great, great piece about, you know, like, why are we finding out through FOIAs? You know, why are we finding out... Why aren't we having reports on this? And the funny part about it is, <clears throat> still up here, the politicians are silent. I'm actually going to make a phone call to my guy tomorrow in Ottawa to say, hey, dude, what's going on here? Why are we silent on this? Do we have the Canadian military industrial complex up here? Right? I'm going to ask. Seemingly a more effective one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask. And and for Daniel, I know he's hot on the case. He's got a bunch of stories in the burner right now. It's a good article. I mean, I mm -hmm. really, I encourage everyone to read what did, it. What did, just, you, what did you like about it? Well, to me, it was just, it, um, it was, it was more, it was more his tone and his approach to it in that, you know, he was taking what I would argue is um, a very, you know, honest and discerning approach i mean to me there there was just there was absolutely no um uh i mean this is this is just this is just a really good honest critique you know and and um and you know and he he basically he he really covers his bases um and you know to me it's i i i guess i guess my big question is i don't understand how something like this can go unanswered well in the canadian military if we don't talk about it it didn't happen and the canadian government has always been that way and canadians are too resident or resident and too understanding and too sheepish to ask the questions 
Hmm. Well, I will say this though that that you know it's 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 only we're only starting to see a lot of U.S. Congress people starting to speak out um, with any kind of passion um, uh, in front of the cameras, and so and that that's going to grow as it continues to 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 have an effect. I think once that's seen more and more in the TV, that that might that might encourage people to to break out a little more. I, I think you know I, I think for a lot of people they're just they're. They're really terrified what it's going to do to their career. Oh, as they yeah. should be. You know? Yeah, I mean, they... yeah, quite fairly. Yeah, quite fairly. Yeah. yeah interesting times, though, for sure. Interesting times. Oh, hugely.